let's move on. Uh, I remember it was last session that one of you mentioned, can we actually store the weights in lower bits rather than 32? Can we do it in 16 bits? Rather than 16, can we do it in eight? So this paper takes it to the extreme. It says, I'm gonna store the weights in a binary, basically zero and one, zero or one in a single bit. And then we're gonna see where the name XNOR comes in as we go into details, but we are using binary convolutions now. We are binarizing our network. So here's a big picture. You have an image, you have a bunch of filters, and let's look at this part of the network. There is the input and there is the weights, and the weights are convolutional weights. It means that you're gonna keep sliding them over these inputs tensor with a standard convolution everything is 32 bits let's assume that's 32 your input is 32 and your weights are being represented in 32 bits the operations that you're going to do are going to be addition subtraction and multiplication you are multiplying two numbers together and then you're adding your your numbers uh, together because you're doing a dot product of your filter and the input and that's going to be our baseline Everything is going to be one because that's our baseline in terms of memory and computation. And that's our baseline accuracy. We are going to do two steps. One is binarize the weights and the other one is binar binarize the weights and the input. Binarizing the weights means that you're going to end up with either one or negative one. You have only two values. It's either one or a negative one. And if that's the case, when you multiply this binary weight and your input, the only operations that you're going to do is addition and subtraction. There is not going to be any multiplication because you're either positive or negative and then you're adding a positive and a negative number. Is that clear? So it doesn't make sense to multiply negative 1 by negative 0.21. You can just use uh, addition instead rather than doing a multiplication. In terms of memory saving, you're going to save 32. In terms of computational saving, you're going to save by two. The other step is to actually binarize your inputs as well. As you can guess, you're going to lose some accuracy here, but you're going to have a lot of computational savings because rather than doing addition and subtraction, you're doing XNOR operation. And these are much faster. Okay, let's go into more details. That's the big picture. This middle row seems very suspect to me because didn't we show that if we quantize too much, we lose accuracy when we were doing the uh, like deep compression two sessions again? Uh, this is like, this is actually different from what we are doing, what we did in the deep compression. It seems like an even more extreme version of quantization. Um, just, just recasting things based on whether they're positive or negative, I guess is how they did it here. Uh, you're very close, yes. Or above, we're gonna, below some, some threshold? Not really. We are going to see how things work. Okay. But once I go through the details, you're going to see that the method is totally different. Got it. Okay. Over there, you were doing pruning first, and then you were quantizing. But that quantization was, I think that's the wrong name for it. It was just parameter sharing. You were finding the centroids, and then... Uh, and there is also another question from Cooper. Is this starting from the first layer? Yes, so it's going to start from the first layer, actually not the input image. We are not binarizing the input image. Okay, that was my question, because then you'd have to like map it somehow to negative values as well, I guess. Or... Yes. Okay. But you're on the right point when uh, you mentioned map it to negative values. When we actually binarize the input, we are going to normalize the input, basically subtract the mean. So you're going to have some negative numbers and some positive numbers. But let's see how we are going to do it. First, what are the applications? It's going to have some applications in virtual reality, augmented reality, and the smart variable devices. Because now these networks are really small. These are the applications. Let's see the math. That's our input. It has C channels. And the resolution is W in and H in weight and height. So that's, that's our input tensor. This is our weight for a single filter. We're going to have multiple filters. This is just one filter. It has the same number of input channels as your input tensor. It has its own weight and height for the filter size. And usually widths W and H are much smaller than W input and H input. What we are going to do is we are going to approximate W by a scalar times a binary weight. So it's going to be alpha times B 
and it's going to be an approximation because we have some constraints on B. It has to be a binary matrix. And alpha still could still be a 32-bit float number. So alpha is okay, but B we are going to binarize. And as I said, B is allowed to take only positive and negative values. It's either plus one or negative one. That's our binary feature. And alpha is our scaling factor. And what's going to happen to convolutions? We just cite up there that there is no need to do any multiplication. When I was explaining, you only need to do addition and subtraction because these values are either one or negative one, positive or negative, and you're going to end up with a bunch of additions and subtractions. So your convolutions are going to be very simple. You don't need to do any multiplication. And that's how you're saving uh, 2x in terms of computation. Now let's flatten these matrices, actually these tensors, and turn them into an array or two arrays of n dimensions. And now because we are flattening, uh, the dimension is going to be c by w by h. So is this clear? We just flattened two tensors. Perfect. We are going to write an objective function because we want w to be as close as possible to alpha b. So we are going to do a regression on that. And let's just expand this. You say w minus alpha b transpose times w minus alpha b and expand things out. You're going to get alpha squared b transpose times b coming from this term. You're going to get negative 2 alpha w transpose times b. That's going to give you this term plus w transpose times w transpose coming from this term. So we just expanded things out. Let's look at b transpose b. b is just a bunch of plus or minus ones. So what's going to happen? An element is either one and it's going to get multiplied by one or it's a negative one and it's going to get multiplied by negative one. And regardless of what the value is, you're going to end up with a one in the end. And then because of the transpose here, you're doing a summation over a bunch of ones. That's going to give you n. So this term is just n. This other term, we are going to assume that we know w. Since w is known, that's just a constant. And let's call the constant to be c. Now what we want to do is to find the arg mean, basically minimize that objective function and find the best beta and alpha. Let's look at beta. Let's solve the problem one at a time. Let's try to find beta. This is just a constant. We don't care about alpha because we are trying to find beta now. The only term that's a function of beta is this term. And alpha, we assume, is always positive. Minimizing j is equivalent to maximizing w transpose b. And these are just constants. So this is equivalent to maximizing w transpose b. And there is a constraint that this has to be either positive or negative, beta. It has to be plus one or negative one. And as you mentioned, the solution to that maximization problem is very simple. If you want to maximize this, whenever a weight is positive, whenever a weight is positive, make your beta to be plus one. And whenever that's negative, make that term positive, make the multiplication positive. Then that's how you're maximizing your objective function. So the solution to this problem is trivial. Whenever your weight is positive, b1, bi is plus one, whenever it's negative, multiply it by negative one so that the entire product is positive and then you're adding a bunch of positive numbers and that's how things are going to get maximized. So beta star is just a sign of w. I think we are out of time. For those of you who have questions, you're more than welcome to stay and ask. And for those of you who want to leave, you're more than welcome to leave. Uh, so I have a quick question. Well, I'm not really sure what it is actually. Um, um, I covered Binary Connect um, from Bengio and two other people at the uh, uh, Montreal lab. And they did something, so the paper came out almost the same month as this one, and mm -hmm. they did something very similar. And I saw that this paper discussed what they did, and then they came out with a new paper like some sometime later, and they didn't even cite this paper. But they, they like, it seemed like they implemented the same thing. Yes, so that one I'm not sure but most of these topics in deep learning are happening in a fast pace. So it's very hard to keep track of uh, who did what and who did first, and et cetera. But you're right. This paper came after Binary Connect, and there are some differences. That's yeah, this, th this one and that one, they're very interesting papers, yeah. um, just because they're, they're able to so, like, go so far with the simpl simplification of the weights. Yeah, this is a great paper. Can I ask, um, for this... Uh... 
this approach, they're just taking a, a pre-trained Alex net model and then altering their weights according to this process. Is that correct? Actually, there is some training steps going on. Okay. After this process here? We're going to see how the training is going to go. But uh, the way that the training goes is that in the training step, you keep W around because you want to do your back propagations correctly. But then every time that you do your back propagation, you do this step. You find your beta star and then you find your alpha star. There is actually training going on here because without training, if you buy Narice and an AlexNet, you're going to lose everything. If you just take the pre-trained thing and you just binarize the... You could do that. You could warm start your training. Mm -hmm. But if you start with, a, with AlexNet, you binarize it, you lose the entire information. Mm -hmm. Without training, that's going to be outputting garbage. Okay, okay. And just on your forward pass, you use this alpha B matrix instead. But when you backpropagate, you're updating W. Exactly. When you do backpropagation, you do W. Okay. When you do forward propagation, you use alpha star and B star. Okay, cool. Thank and you. That's the, in the end, that's the model that you're going to put on your device. You use alpha star and B star. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? You're welcome.